good evening dear students in the previous video we have studied regulation of gene expression and that was associated with regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes and in today's video let me explain you regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes and i already told you in every organism dna is nothing but many number of genes are present in the dna but no organism requires expression of all the genes all the time so whenever a gene expression is required a particular gene is said to be switched on and it gives its expression and when the expression is not required then the gene is said to be switched off so what is that mechanism which is what we call regulation of gene expression and today regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes and if you ask me regulation of gene expression occurs at how many levels and already we have discussed regulation of gene expression occurs at various levels like at the level of transcription or at the level of transport of mrna or at the level of processing of mrna or finally at the level of uh, translation but basically regulation of gene expression is very common by a factor called repressor so when repressor binds with the fragment of dna and that fragment of dna is nothing but the gene which fails to give the expression but in the textbook regulation of gene expression is mentioned at the processing of mrna so in prokaryotes regulation of gene expression occurs at the level of transcription which we have studied in lac operon and normally in eukaryotes regulation of gene expression occurs at which level at the level of processing of mrna so what is this processing of mrna and how it helps in the regulation of gene expression we are going to discuss today when we talk about mrna as we all know m stands for messenger and we know that mrna is the product of a process called transcription what is transcription transcription is nothing but the process of synthesis of single stranded mrna from double stranded dna so single stranded mrna is synthesized on double stranded dna in presence of an enzyme rna polymerase which is otherwise called transcriptase because we call this process as what transcription the enzyme which makes this process possible is called transcriptase but actually which enzyme it is it is rna polymerase so rna polymerase is the enzyme responsible for the synthesis of single stranded mrna from double stranded dna during a process called transcription and in eukaryotes especially synthesis of mrna is the function of a particular type of rna polymerase which type it is rna polymerase 2 so students should remember in eukaryotes mrna is synthesized by which type of enzyme rna polymerase 2 and this point is important i am repeating because in prokaryotes all the types of rnas are synthesized by the single type of rna polymerase but in eukaryotes different types of rnas are synthesized by different types of rna polymerases so that's why students should remember in eukaryotes mrna is the product of which enzyme rna polymerase 2 and uh, one more point we have to remember whenever we talk about protein synthesis in eukaryotes at the end of transcription whichever the mrna is produced that is not going to be the functional one directly and we call such mrna as hn rna so here hn stands for heterogeneous nuclear rna and if you ask me what is heterogeneous nuclear rna definition wise hn rna is the precursor of eukaryotic mrna so functional eukaryotic mrna is formed by hn rna so let us understand what exactly hn rna and how it gets converted into functional mrna actually we call that process as rna splicing so once again what is splicing splicing is the process which converts hn rna into functional mrna hn stands for what 
heterogeneous nuclear RNA. So here is heterogeneous nuclear RNA. So eukaryotic mRNA immediately at the end of transcription it is not ready to participate in translation. If you ask me why? Immediately at the end of transcription why? eukaryotic mRNA contains both coding and non-coding sequences in it. Coding sequence is called exon which only codes for amino acids but along with exons it also contains introns. Introns are the non-coding sequences and we know for the process of synthesis of a polypeptide or protein what is required only coding sequences called exons are required. So what are not required for translation introns. So before translation from the HNRNA, what should be removed? Non-coding sequences called intron should be removed. And what should be attached end to end? Exon should be attached end to end. So this entire process is called RNA splicing. So students should remember what is RNA splicing? Why is it required? RNA splicing is required only in eukaryotes. Why tell me? Immediately at the end of transcription, the RNA which is synthesized is not the functional form of mRNA and what do you call it? We call it HNRNA. HN stands for what? Heterogeneous Nuclear RNA. What it is? It is the precursor of eukaryotic mRNA. What does it contain? It contains both coding and non-coding sequences. Coding sequences are called exons. They only code for amino acids. Non-coding sequences are called introns. So that's why before translation, introns must be removed and exon should be attached. So this entire process is called splicing. RNA splicing is the function of a special set of RNA proteins which are called spliceosomes. So spliceosomes are the set of enzymes which contain a type of RNA plus protein and together help in the process called splicing. And which type of RNA is present in that? And students should remember, it's an important question for competitive exam. Spliceosomes contain a type of RNA which is called SNRNA. Here SN stands for small nucleolar RNA. So I repeat, spliceosomes are the set of enzymes which help in the function of RNA splicing. Spliceosomes are made up of RNA plus protein and which type of RNA is present in spliceosome SNRNA? SN stands for small nucleolar RNA. And coming back to why is this splicing required only in eukaryotes? I already told you immediately at the end of transcription RNA is not ready to participate in translation. Why tell me? It contains both coding and non-coding sequences. What is the reason behind this? Why eukaryotic mRNA contains both coding and non-coding sequences? Reason is very simple. Eukaryotic genes itself are called split genes. Otherwise called discontinuous genes. Means what exactly transcription is? Synthesis of mRNA from DNA. So DNA itself contains nucleotide stretches which code for amino acid followed by nucleotide stretch which do not code for amino acid. Means when you look into fragment of eukaryotic DNA which is nothing but a gene, it contains both coding sequences and non-coding sequences. Actually, we call those coding sequences as what? Exons and non-coding sequences as introns. So with this, it is very clear the gene or a fragment of DNA in eukaryotes, it itself contains coding and non-coding nucleotide sequences. And such gene is always called a split gene, otherwise called discontinuous gene. Whereas in prokaryotes, DNA contains total nucleotide sequence which code for amino acids continuously. That's why prokaryotic gene is a continuous gene and eukaryotic gene is a discontinuous gene. So that's why whichever the sequence, whether it is coding or non-coding, 
all the sequences of DNA are copied as mRNA at the time of transcription in presence of the enzyme RNA polymerase contains both coding and non-coding sequences. Splicing is the process in which hRNA gets converted into functional eukaryotic mRNA. And let us see what are the events occur during splicing. At the time of splicing, four important events occur, namely removal of introns. I already told you, introns are the non-coding sequences. They are not required for translation. So, introns must be removed being non-coding sequences and it is followed by joining of what? Exons. So, exons are the coding sequences. So, continuously exons are added and then at the 5' prime end of the mRNA, a special structure called cap is formed. So, that's what I have written 5' prime cap formation and this 5' prime cap formation is because of a special type of nucleotide students must remember methyl guanosine nucleotide an unusual nucleotide called methyl guanosine nucleotide is added to the 5 prime end of the mrna and that structure is called cap and finally at the 3 prime end a continuous stretch of 200 to 300 adenine nucleotides is added and we call this structure as poly A tail. So, poly A name itself indicates many number of adenine nucleotides are added like a tail at the 3 prime end of the mRNA. So, eukaryotic mRNA contains two special structures. At the 5 prime end it contains a structure called cap. Cap is made up of what? An unusual nucleotide called methyl guanosine nucleotide. And at the 3 prime end, it contains a special structure called tail. Tail is made up of around 200 adenine nucleotides. So, with this it is very clear. At the time of splicing, how many events occur? 4 events occur. In presence of what? In presence of special enzymes which are together called spliceosomes. What are the 4 important events? Non-coding sequences that is introns are removed. Exons are joined continuously. At the 5 prime end what is formed? Cap structure is formed and at the 3 prime end what is formed? Poly A tail is formed. So, these 4 events take place during a special process called splicing. And uh, when we look in to the mRNA, so before splicing it is hRNA. I am showing on the board that is from 5 prime to 3 prime. What does it contain? I already told you. It contains the coding sequences followed by non-coding sequences. See, simply I have represented coding sequences as exons and non-coding sequences as introns. So, what is the first step? Removal of introns because they are the non-coding sequences. What should be removed? Intron should be removed. Then, which is the second step? Joining of exons means all the exons continuously added. Now you can see here the mRNA which is having only coding sequences that is uh, exons. Then which is the third event? Cap formation. Cap is formed at what? 5 prime end of the mRNA. So I already told you cap is formed by a special or unusual nucleotide that is methyl guanosine nucleotide is added at the 5 prime end and we call this structure as what? Cap. And finally, what happens at the 3 prime end? At the 3 prime end, many adenine nucleotides are continuously added as a tail and it is formed by many adenine nucleotides. That's why it is called poly A tail. And now you can see this is the functional form of eukaryotic mRNA which is ready to participate in translation because you can see clearly it has only coding sequences that is exons and uh, eukaryotic mRNA is more stable when compared to prokaryotic mRNA. If you ask me why, reason is very clear. Eukaryotic mRNA contains 5' prime cap structure and 3' prime poly A tail. They are present only in eukaryotic mRNA and absent from prokaryotic mRNA 
and they offer more stability to eukaryotic mRNA. Now, this eukaryotic mRNA ready to participate in what? Translation. When eukaryotic mRNA participates in translation, finally what is formed? A polypeptide chain. Polypeptide, when it becomes functional, I can call it a protein. So a protein is going to be formed. You know very well, protein is nothing but the ultimate product of a gene. But with all this explanation, it is very clear in eukaryotes, whether the polypeptide has to be produced or not, it is decided at which level? It is decided at a special level called splicing or I can call it as processing of mRNA. When does it occur? It occurs before the translation. With this, according to our 12th class syllabus, students should remember, usually in prokaryotes, according to lac operon concept, regulation of gene expression occurs at the level of transcription. Whereas in eukaryotes, regulation of gene expression occurs at the level of processing of mRNA before the translation. Thank you.